like the claims of cryptozoology require and always have had the input of scientists that are informed and hopefully qualified and relevant to fields like paleontology. Anything you can think of can be studied academically. The nature of wanting to know about things require that we collect the information on it and we evaluate it and then we say, you know, what impact it's had on other lines of thought and other areas of inquiry. There's something really interesting there in terms of, you know, cultural transmission and changing ideas over time as portrayed in the literature and pop culture that's all something that's definitely worthy of study people of the past and here i mean the recent past you know within the last couple of centuries they weren't superstitious and all believing in everything you know people were quite sensible and skeptical people that have taken it seriously have come up with this quite complicated view that combines those things like let's come up with an with a, a a sort of creature that can make a living in a body of water like that, that can fit into the ecology. That means that Nessie has sort of served as a foundational pillar for, for later ideas. So so once people interested in cryptids started learning or appreciating that there are supposed to be lake monsters, basically in all the northern hemisphere cool lakes of the world, the idea is, ah, what we came up with, the explanation that we came up with for the Loch Ness Monster can apply to those things as well.